Hey, welcome back. I hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel again. Good to see you. Today on the bench, I got a NAD 6155 stereo cassette deck. Now, what makes this one so unique is it has a remote. It's not often you get to see that. But anyways, this was brought to me by my client, one of my clients, and uh, he says uh, it doesn't do anything. You press play and it doesn't play. I think it has power, but uh, there's no function from the cassette mechanism itself. We can uh, plug it in, try it out right now. Let's see. So what do we got here? Power. Yeah, we have the power. Hmm. We have motor. Let's see if we can do that when it's open. Okay, so we got capstan pinch rollers working. No, it's not. It doesn't come up high enough. Let me show you. Kind of dark and shadowy, but we're going to go with this here. So, when I press play, you can see the mechanism jump up, but it doesn't jump up high enough to engage the pinch roller. The other thing is the take-up reel, their take-up spool doesn't, isn't, isn't turning. If I turn it by hand, I can trick it into thinking that it's working and it doesn't click off. But, uh, As soon as I stop. Okay. Fast forward. We got nothing. Nothing spinning. Rewind. Nothing. So what's going on with this thing? Pause. Plus it's making that god awful noise. You hear that? Yeah, there's something wrong with this mechanism. All right, let's see if we can get the lid off. It's nice and clean inside. We've got a lot of electronics here. There's uh, quite a bit going on the electronics end of things. So, primary circuit, transformer, comes over to here. Looks like we got one winding. They bypassed a couple fuses. They didn't want to put money into fuses. A little bit of power supply section here. And this looks like it's um, for the motor. Looks like they got two windings, an orange and a red. And this, uh, this thing here goes back to the motor, the voltage for the motor. All of our signal processing here on this side. A little bit of string to engage the record function. All right, so I'm not seeing anything right off the bat regarding the... You can see this here, let me get this in frame. Here's our mechanism. A couple, there's three belts, and they're all intact. This one here, that one looks like it's our uh, our drive for the reels. Take up and supply. Let me try pressing a button here. For some reason, it is not engaging. So we're going to have to pull out the mechanism and uh, have a good look at the tape drive on this. All right, here's a look at the back side of the mechanism. Um, this uh, this pulley here, you can, I don't know if you can see the cracks in it. There's cracks radiating, radiating, out, radiating out from the center. One, two, three, four, five, or six cracks. Just wondering if that's 
still on there. But anyways, here's what happens when I press play. This gear, watch this gear, it kind of, every time it makes that noise, it kind of stalls. I think is going on is there's a, a, a meshing gear on this pulley. And I think it's some teeth missing on it. That's what I think is wrong here. That doesn't explain why it doesn't fully engage. Okay, let me take the mechanism out and we'll have a good look at it. Okay, this has to be one of the worst designs of a cassette deck I've ever seen in my life. I am finding it impossible to remove the mechanism from the chassis. And the reason being, first, what screwed me up for about an hour is the face plate or the plastic. Uh, there's there's a, a flat spot here and for whatever reason the mechanism was glued to this and I could not free the two apart. I couldn't pull it out, I couldn't do anything, so I had to get a screwdriver in here from behind and separate the and break the, the glue bond. I think it's just some, some sloppy uh, assembly. They just splattered glue everywhere and I, I think that's got in there and it just, it wasn't intended to be glued, uh, but it was. So now I have it loose, the complete me mechanism's loose, but there's no way to remove this without removing these six buttons, these button covers. These button covers are just snaps on, snapped on. Uh, there's a snap on this side, there's a snap on the other side. There is no way to access the catch on the top here to release the button cover. Uh, with the button cover in place, you can't pull it back through the hole that they provided because there's, it's just a dumb design. Um, and sorry, I'm getting a little frustrated here, but this is, um, this is as far as I can get it out. And then uh, unless I start forcing things and breaking plastics, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. Um, I think maybe if I just, I don't know. I just don't want to break anything. That's the problem. And there's just no room the way the molding is. It just locks it in. Now, the reason I want to get this out is because I want to get this cover off so I can inspect underneath what is going on with this pulley and this gear mechanism. I, I suspect there's a broken gear in here. And if that's the case, um, this deck is pretty much a pile of scrap unless I can find new parts. Now I have a few ideas about finding parts, but I can't get to that step until I get this mechanism out. And uh, yeah, so uh, another thing I noticed, this remote is not for this deck. There is no remote sensor here, anywhere hidden. There's no electronics for a remote sensor. There's no, uh, uh, this is just a really rudimentary cassette drive mechanism. It's all mechanical. Uh, if you're gonna get into the, uh, electronics involved with getting a remote control to, to power this, to drive this, or to command this, you need to have a, um, a solenoid control mechanism that is uh, operated by a microcontroller. And there's no microcontroller in this thing. So this is not for this deck. I don't know where it came from. Um, so that's up to the owner, I guess. Uh, I don't know where he got this deck from. I think he picked it up used and uh, they just threw the, the uh, remote in as a freebie, I think. So, still gonna fight with this. And then when I get back, either I'm gonna break it or I'm gonna fix it. So I'll get back to you in a bit here. Okay, so I decided to take off the cover, the plate with the mechanism still in the rather than breaking stuff. So this is not working. I'm just trying to look at what's going on here. I don't know if you can see any of this. It doesn't matter. There's something going on in behind here that I can't see. It's making that noise. And I think it's a, a, a 
a gear with a tooth or two missing. This thing should uh, actually click up like that. Let me try that again. See? If it goes up higher. For some reason this is not... Yeah, let me look on the other side. Maybe there's something I can pull apart there and find out. All right, so from what I can tell, I need to remove this black assembly. It's held in by one, two, three, four, maybe five screws. I don't know, I can't tell. And uh, yeah, this has to come out because I can't see what's going on in behind it. To remove that part, I need to remove the flywheel and capstan. To remove the flywheel and capstan, I need to remove this uh, strut here. And to remove that, I need to remove the whole thing from the chassis because there's screws on the side. There's screws on this side, screws on this side to remove the motor and the, and the strut uh, before I can take out the uh, flywheel. And uh, this just ain't happening. If I can't get it out of the chassis, I could probably take these four screws out, but then I don't know if I can take it apart and then be able to put it back together again. There could be little springs in there. There could be uh, um, something holding down here. This is just a nightmare. This is part of the reason why I hate working on cassette decks is uh, sometimes they're, they, they're easy to work on. Sometimes they're just garbage. And it seems like Nad went the garbage route. Plastic gears, plastic pulleys, nylon, this and that. Um, it wasn't really thought out. So I'm going to keep poking at this. I don't think I can get it out of the chassis unless I remove all those buttons, those six buttons. And then to remove the six buttons, I think they're glued on. And um, I started prying on one of them and then it snapped a little clip off. So, I, I, you know, that's enough of that. So I'm going to look at this carefully and see what I can do. I'm going to try maybe pulling these four screws out and see if this just will tip back and then I can lift it out. But I doubt it because there's things on the other side that need to be pulled a, free to clear. And there's all kinds of stuff going on here on both sides. All right, I think I'm making some headway. First, I had to remove the power switch because it was in the way. And then I can sneak a screwdriver in here. I got this screw out of the side of the uh, strut that holds the motor. See, now it's loose. Now I just need to go to the other side. Oh, my God. And uh, deal with this side here. Let's look at this. So here is the other side. And we can... This thing here... I think I need to remove this. This is a dampening for the, the cassette door. And it's in this screw here is holding it. And it's in the way because it's attached to this. I need to remove this E-clip. So maybe if I just remove this E-clip, I can remove these two screws and uh, the whole thing will come out as an assembly. So let's do that. Let's give me get a screwdriver in there and pull that E-clip out. This is going to be awkward because I'm doing it on the camera and everything's not ideal when you're doing it on the camera but uh, I'll try to keep my cursing down. Let me see what I can do here. If I can find some tools, I would be happy. Oh, here we go. Okay. Remove this E-clip without losing it. I think I can do that. And there it is. Got it. Okay. Now I should be able to remove this screw. See, everything's in the way. It's just annoying. Just, maybe I'm just having a bad day. Okay, there's one screw out. screw out. Some good lighting would be nice too. All right, 
So that should pull the motor and nope, it doesn't. I still have this screw here. This is going to be a joy to put it back together, especially if there's any springs that need clipping back. wires holding now this is really starting to this is really starting to annoy me okay we got a red wire here that's holding everything up disconnect this get that out of the way okay let me lay this down Pull off the belts. Look at this. Look at this. They got it wrapped around so that it's entangled. Okay, get out of the way. Now we can pull apart our capstan. Another belt in the way. You have to remove the washer from the uh, from the capstan. And another belt fell off. And there's our flywheel. Put this back on here so we don't lose it. Oh, look! Now we can take this mechanism out and find out what's going on with it. This thing's supposed to latch up. I don't see any broken gears. it's underneath I can't see underneath but it's jamming what is it jamming for it seems like it's jamming Something jammed in the... See, now it's running free. Why is it jamming? Gotta be something stuck in one of these gears. I think it's in behind there, to tell you the truth. Let's pull this one off and have a look at this tire. Oh, that's tight. Okay, let's put this off. There we go. What is that? 
a needle pick or something. A needle. Let me see if we can zoom in. Maybe you can watch along. I see something here. All it takes is like a little piece of sand or something or grit to get into these gears and it'll jam them up. I don't see anything though. That's really I'm not seeing anything at all. Why this wouldn't spin free. Hmm. What was that? What is this? Was that our problem right there? Something. Even this one is still. There's something in this one. Right here is a piece of green stuff. Is that our problem? I don't know. There's little pieces of. I'll try. Now it's rotating free. I think we might have found the problem. A little piece of foreign matter. Let me try cleaning the rest of these. If I can get in here to see. Like this one has stuff in it. Uh, a few of these have junk in them. seems to be it's not binding anymore it's not making a ticking noise okay let's put this back on now it's ro rotating free okay what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clean this tire with some rubber renew just to get all it because I got my my hands are greasy now from playing around with these gears. I'm gonna clean this rubber tire off. I'm gonna lubricate this shaft for this tire. I'm gonna reassemble everything and we're gonna put it back together and we're gonna give it a try. I think I got it. There was something stuck in one of the gears. See now that should should pull that up and that's this is this is what engages the heads and the roller onto the uh, tape and i got stuff in these gears too here look at this this green stuff should maybe clean some of this out I think the rest of them are good. Okay. All right. So when you're putting this black piece back in, you've got to make sure that it's completely seated. And uh, by what I mean seated, it's just not rocking because when you start putting the screws in and tightening down, you're going to break something. Um, there's a number of things that have to happen before this will fit, drop into place. This mechanism here needs to. Uh, be on top underneath there i'm assuming i don't think it belongs on top no um 
and then we'll flip it over I'll show you the other side here these two posts need to be sticking through right here and here and this post needs to be engaged and stuck through that rides along this uh, cam here um, yeah so it has to all be uh, engaged before you screw it down otherwise you'll break something and then on the other side there is a spring that needs to be attached probably came detached when you took it out this spring here so if everything's back together we can uh, belt up actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at this I'll have a look at this here this pulley is filthy it's got all kinds of residue on it the inside one as well look at how black it is in there so I'm going to clean this pulley uh, probably drop uh, drop oil on the bearing of this motor uh, I had to remove this switch because it was just in the, impeding my progress here I, it belongs here and uh, it was really screwing me up for getting that mounted so I'll have to reattach that switch uh, deal with this pulley lube that motor and then we can belt up and uh, actually what i'll do is i'll clean the belts and inspect some of these belts too i think i don't know if they're slipping or what's going on here what do we got four belts here this one's round this one's got some cracking on it don't know if they need replacement or not i want to try them out as they are, this belt has all kinds of stuff going on in the underneath. Maybe it's okay. It needs a good clean, that's for sure. I'll clean all the belts and then I'll reassemble. Here, have a look at this. I don't know if you can see, I have to zoom in here because it's pretty detailed. So here's the pulley on the motor. It looks like the belt was stuck to the pulley, the brass, and somebody went in here with a screwdriver or something and scraped off some residue, but they, they scraped up the brass pretty good. And uh, I think that's gonna cause some wow and flutter. Well, actually it's gonna cause flutter, not wow, but uh, <clears throat> My solution for that is to get a scouring pad and just cut off a piece. Don't need a big piece, just a little piece. And we're going to repolish this uh, motor. So this switch here is actually a motor switch. So I just turn the motor on, got it powered up, and I can go in here and clean this, just polish it up so it's not going to flutter when the tape's playing. It's getting a little better. Just keep going. Let's get it nice and shiny. I think we're just about there. Just gonna let this go for a while and polish. Okay, what do we got here? Let's have a look. Right, can you see that? I think that's the spot where it was scratched up. I think it's pretty smoothed out now. It's just dust. That's a lot better. Now I need to clean out this V groove here on this uh, other this other pulley. Looks like there's some kind of glue or adhesive that got. See, there's green stuff. It seems like it's everywhere. Got to get in here and dig it out. 
Look at that. What is this stuff? So I'll keep picking away at this and then uh, when I'm satisfied I'm going to lubricate the motor. Let it run for a while. Another thing I noticed is the motor has a short in it. If I go like this. And watch this. That motor shaft is at uh, different potential than the, sh the shell. I'm just wondering if the motor is defective. It shouldn't make any difference though if there's a short to the uh, the rotor. It's as long as it doesn't affect its performance. Yeah, this is a mess. Whatever this green stuff is, it got into the gears and it's on the belts. Just wondering what happened here. Okay. All right, I'm back together again and uh, I'm just giving it a test here. And uh, let's just hit the play button. It's still not working. But it's not making that funny noise anymore. It just seems like the uh, the heads are not loading properly. Let's try helping it a bit. Okay. It's quite a bit of spring pressure to help it, it go up. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, I don't know if you can see this mechanism back here, this white piece of plastic that does a little Watusi every once in a while. That is the mechanism that's the auto stop. And its function is just to wobble like that forever until this stops. Once this stops, it clicks it off. Now, what is going on with this thing? Fast forward. That does not work. Fast forward rewind doesn't work. So we got to figure out what's going on with this thing. Why isn't it the loading the heads properly? I'm looking back here. Let me get these stupid wires out of the way. I don't know if you can see this gear here. I get my fingers in the way. This gear here. This is the one that does the, the head, head loading. Let me see if I can get this to work again. Now, as far as I can tell, I don't have any slipping belts. It just does not want to load. So I'm going to take this apart again. I'm going to remove the motor, belts, and this black assembly, the uh, take up and supply reels. And I'm going to have a good look at this assembly underneath here. I don't know. Maybe I, I missed something. I don't know. But it's definitely not loading the way it should. All right. I think I've been racking my brain here trying to figure out why this does not work. This is the mechanism that raises and lowers the uh, heads and pinch roller. And it's some series of cams and gears. It seems to be, I pulled it all apart and checked everything and everything looks good. I'm just going to put it all back together right now while I uh, got it fresh in my memory. Because I don't want to forget any of this. 
going to put this together. Get my big fat fingers to cooperate. Okay. And then there's a lever. This lever hooks in like so. This gets hooked on here, the spring. Okay. more e-clip now I think I found the problem with the uh, me mechanism as to why it's not loading let me get this back together and I'll show you here in a second oh, you got to be kidding me Now, have a look at this side. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I'll try pointing it out to you. This mechanism here, this is what raises and lowers the um, See the mechanism goes up and down easy is no problem what the problem is is there's a spring here see this spring and it's got absolutely zero tension on it the reason is because this end popped out and the reason it popped out is because uh, there's a big chunk of plastic broken and missing here behind the head and that spring should actually be down press down underneath. I can't press it because it's got a lot of tension. It's a thick spring. I need a flat screwdriver. I can find one here. So that spring should be loaded and pressed down under this head. So what do I got to do here? I got to, oh boy. Because when that's loaded, it presses down on this white post, and that that's what provides the uh, uplift. That white post is what pushes up. But now there's no tension on that spring, so it doesn't go up fully. It goes up halfway, and it doesn't go up fully. That's the reason why this mechanism doesn't work. Now is there, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Ooh, there's a lot of pressure on that. Uh, I need to figure out a way to anchor that end of the spring and put tension back on this end. Let me put my thinking cap on, see if I can come up with something. All right, I think I'm making headway here. I finally got the mechanism out of the face panel or the front panel. And now I'm able to remove the piano keys and uh, see if we can get this thing out. All 
right. I think I have to remove. I'm looking at this thing here. This is where are we? Right over here. So I got this plate, and then I have one, two, three. It looks like all four screws. Not that one. Maybe that one. Yeah. That one is an adjustment screw, so all these three screws here have to come out, it looks like. Let's try this. Let's see if we can get these screws out. This one's got a spring. For the adjustment. Okay, one more screw and this assembly should be loose. holding. Is there a hidden screw? Let's see one here. It's probably this adjustment screw is holding. That's probably what the... That's what I'm understanding. Gonna need a realignment after anyway. Okay, there we go, we're loose. So let's remove this spring and screw. Get that out of the way before I lose it. And we can now see the broken part right here. This spring is supposed to be under tension, like right in that captive little area there, but it's not. It came, see, it came out. So, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, this whole piece is broken. Can it be fixed? What I was thinking is if I got another spring similar to this one, same wire thickness and same configuration, and but this one was longer, like maybe five or six millimeters longer, I could put it in there and it would land underneath that screw and then it, when you tighten it down, it uh, Will stay there and then you got your spring tension here let me see what i have in my sp spring stash if i can find something like that springs are kind of unique you can make springs you know if you have the right wire and uh yeah that's exactly what's wrong with this thing it's broken broken there And it's a shame too because you know what these heads are not worn these heads are actually pretty nice shape it looks like a low hours unit there's very little wear on these heads okay let me see what i can do about this spring all right all right so i'm looking at this thing and saying what can i do for this it should be in like this it sits in the little And then it's tensioned, but it, this piece is broken, completely broken away. 
and there's no way that's going to hold that spring even if I glued it with epoxy and put you know filled it in with plastics and stuff it's never going to hold up against the spring pressure of this so I'm thinking what else can I can do here I'm thinking this is where it sits I'm thinking what's preventing me from drilling a little hole right about here uh, where is it look on this straight on probably a little hole here a hole just big enough that I can put a screw in and uh, make a post I can use a small screw let's see here if I can find let's say something like this tweezers drill the right sized hole I could even thread it and then I could screw that in from behind and then that post would be sticking up right where it needs to be and then the spring can rest up against it and the spring would be transferring all of its torque and, and pressure up against the screw in, instead of up against this piece of plastic. Now I would need, let's see here, I don't know what size this is. I'm wondering if there's room on the other side for the head of that screw or if it's going to bump into something. I won't know until I take it apart. But if I screwed that in there and made a post that the spring could rest up against, that would be a good fix. That would be pretty much the end of that. Now, it would be nice if I had like a countersunk screw, a flathead screw with, and I could countersink the hole. And uh, Actually, let's go with this. Let's try this out. I do have some. I'm going to see if I have the right taps here to tap a hole that small. Let me check. All right, so here's what I've done. I drilled a hole and I tapped it for an M2 thread. So we can put a little screw in. I purposely tapped it so it's not very loose. I wanted to tap it so it had a little bit of friction, a little bit of that's on there pretty good. So now I have a post sticking up. Uh, let's see here. This goes under here. Just want to see how this fits. I don't have the uh, ball bearings in place. There's three ball bearings. Okay. I think that's going to work good. Now with this, I have to trim the plastic here a little bit. But this should go right into that position. So how do I trim that? And that spring will rest up against this post now. I could actually even uh, strengthen it by putting a nut on it. I don't have any small nut. I could look for a really small nut. But if I wanted to secure this post even more, I could just put a nut on there and lock tight it. And uh, yeah, so this is going to ride there. Where are we here? We gotta line up our holes. This hole. And I need to trim right here. The plastic so that this goes up a little higher. It's not quite there yet, but it will be. Alright, so I got the plate reinstalled. Uh one two two C eclipse and 
um, the ball bearing retainer here with a screw. And I got it on my post. It's in place, it's secure, and it's solid. Um, it's going to need to be solid because if you look here, this is where the uh, spring lands. And you can see this, maybe it's too far out. There's going to be quite a lot of pressure on that little post. And uh, so one thing I want to do is I want to just put a nut on there just to secure it. The, the hole's threaded, but this plate is only maybe 1.1 1, 1 .1 or 1.2 millimeters thick. And uh, not a lot of threads gripping that screw. So what I want to do is just place a little bit of thread locker on here and put a nut to uh, secure it down. I'm just going to use a little bit of thread locker. I can get this to work. I don't go too crazy with this stuff. Okay. Get a nut on here. Now, another thing I did is I took a Dremel and I uh, cut this back here. It used to be, uh, it used to flow like this but I cut this part out just because that's where the post rests. And then I cut it back here a little bit more just to make clearance for the nut. So I got the nut in place. Let's tighten it down. Snug it up. And that should be sufficient. Let's test fit this. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Just enough clearance. Our screw holes all line up. The post itself, let me zoom in. The post itself is probably maybe two millimeters too long, but that's okay. I don't think it's going to interfere with anything. I think it's just going to stick out a little bit. So now that I have this, we could probably start putting things back together. Uh, let's see here. I need a... Where was the screw? There's missing one screw. Hang on. Let me find... Oh, here it is. This is it. This black screw. Is that the right one? I think so. Okay, we have our spring. Let's put this in here. This is going to be tricky. don't know if I can do it this way. It's going to have to go like this around the post and then yeah fun. I'm trying to get this lined up. You know what? I think I might just remove this plate again and do it off the mechanism. It might be easier instead of having it jump up on me. So give me a minute. I'll remove this plate. It doesn't take long. It's a couple, couple E-clips and one screw and out it comes. And then I'll... Uh, continue on with this. Okay, and I got it out now. So this is what it looks like on the back side. It is a, it's a flathead screw and it's only maybe just over a millimeter thick. And I, what I did is I took it to a stone and I just uh, ground it down with a, with a grindstone just to take off any high points, maybe any sharp points and make it smoother and drop the uh, height down a little bit. And uh, looking at this, and so it was on here, it doesn't even look like it's a uh, touching. It might be It might be touching, but what I did is I just put a little dab of grease on there. If it, if it slides against that back plate, it's fine. Let it slide. It's not really causing any friction. So let's get this together now. This is going to be difficult because 
we got a lot of spring tension to fight with. So here's what it looks like assembled. And you know what? I think I need to grind off more. It's sitting on that nut, so I'm going to have to grind off more. Okay, so let's see how this fits now. That nut's a bigger than I wanted it to be, but uh, it looks like it'll work. Still having trouble getting around it. All right, let's try assembling this thing. Looks like it's gonna fit, it's already sticking. Okay, so spring. And we need this. Now we need to load the spring up. Actually, you know what, I think I might What is it hitting now? Ah, uh, my nut's hitting the spring. Okay. If I can move that spring up and over. There we go. Oh, there's a lot of tension on that spring. Let me try anchoring it. That's not working. Looks like I already do. Okay, I'm gonna need to, uh, it's not fitting, this, this nut is too thick. All right, let's do that again. I got another nut here. This one's a lot smaller. This one, this one here is four millimeters across. This one, oh, this one's five millimeters across. This one's four. Same thread, th same pitch. So we can put this on and it should alleviate our clearance problems we were having. So let's put this nut on. It's a lot thinner too, which is good. Let's lock this one in place. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to buy some more Loctite. There we go. All right. way too much on there whatever okay a pair of up all right now let's see how that fits should be a lot better oh yeah way better okay let's put this on Now 
can we get this thing in place? There's a lot of tension on that. I'm just really... There. Oops. Got to keep... Oop. There we go. Wow, this does not want to hold. Now, best thing I can do right now is get this thing mounted. Or actually, I should mount one of these. Mount this one. A lot of tension on that. That screw's not long enough. Come on. Okay. Now what I need to do is get in here and pop this spring up. It popped out again. How about that? This is the fight part. This spring has really got a lot of tension on it. I don't know why they needed such a heavy duty spring and with these plastic components. Okay, there we go. Okay, I need to get this. not cooperating. There we go. Tighten this one down. And that should hold it. This one here is still loose. Okay. Good. Okay, now we can do the rest of this. I can put my spring on, put the head on. this green stuff off because I'm going to need to adjust this screw and clean some of this stuff off here. It doesn't want to 
to come off. Get my fat fingers in there. Uh oh. Whack, whack, whack. I'm going to have to cut that screw. It is in the way. Okay, no problem. Let's do that. Figuring out why it wouldn't go together so well to bend that arm out back straight again. Okay, let's take this, this, and this. Where'd the spring go? Right here. And the shim. And the shim is important too. Okay, let's cut this. Keep going. How's it going to fit now? Yeah, it's a lot better. Except. I really dislike this blue thread locker they use. It's... And then on the other hand, I'd like to find out where they get it from. I'd like to buy some. Because it's good for electronics, used for locking screws and stuff, but where do you find it? I suppose you can only buy a 45 gallon drum of it if you're a manufacturer. Okay, let's straighten this out. We're going to do a head alignment on this after, anyways. We, we have to. Okay, spring, head. Shim. Screw. Which one was it? This short one? That short ones? Long ones. Short one.
All right. This thing is a pain. There, that's easy. Okay, drop our spring in. All right, now we're back together. Let's put these, push these back in before I break a wire. Okay, we're all good. So I'll assemble this back together Looks like it's going to work quite a bit of tension on this spring. I don't know if it's position right. It must be position right. And uh, let's see how it works. All right, just going through and replacing the belts. Well, I'm not replacing them. I'm actually uh, going to reuse these ones. I'm not sure about this one. It's got a kind of a funny texture to the underside of it. We'll see how it plays. But somebody replaced the belts in this thing because this thing is not the original belt. And neither is this one. This one's a round belt. This is a square cut. And this one, this this one here is is definitely not the right size. It is way too small. It is uh, five five point two maybe. And uh, when I put it on here, I had to really stretch it out. And that's not good because it'll snap eventually. This belt here is more the correct size. This one measures out at about a six. But it's round. It's, you don't use round cut belts when you have, when you have uh, the V-groove uh, pulleys. You, uh, these are for round pulleys. This belt here is the uh, tape counter belt, which is fine. I'm going to leave that one. This one I'm going to reuse. This one is the main uh, capstan belt. It seems okay. But these belts are not the right ones. So I picked out one here. This one here is a 5.7. And... Uh, seems to be working fine in that position. But now I think I need to find something for this belt here. This one goes to the motor. And this is a round belt. And I don't want to use a round belt. Here, let me load this in properly. Even a six is probably, let me see here. I'm stretching it out. It's got a little bit of stretch in it, but it's not that bad. Not like the other one. So I'll probably go with a six on this one as well. But I need to find a square cut belt. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have another 5.7. Let's try and fit this one. I think this one might be a little too tight. Because I have to stretch it. Come on. 
you can do it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit too much tension for my. That's not good. Let's see if I can find something else. This is the original. If I have to use the round belt, I will. It seems to fit right. The other ones are not. Let me see what else I have here. A lot of the belts I have here are for VCRs and they're quite thick. And uh, you don't want to put a thick belt in a spot where it's not intended to be thick because you get a lot of rolling resistance and uh, drag, a little extra drag. What is this one? This one here. What is this? There's a six. Let's see how this one fits. Yeah, I think this one's better. I don't have to pull on it so hard. It's not so tight. Yeah. Okay, go with that. All right, I'll put this all together now. Since we have... belts in place I could just do this and be done there we go I'll straighten it up later I know I got some twists in the belts and I'll do that after I secure the motor but uh, Okay, before I get too carried away with assembly here, I want to make sure we have a working mechanism. So I'm going to plug a tape in. And I do have a, to plug this in. Okay, let's see if this works. Hoping it does. Oh, look at that. Okay. No fast forward. Rewind. There we go. Fast forward. Rewind. Play. It's all working now. Right on. Okay, so I'm going to assemble this, put the front panel back on, and then we can do our adjustments speed adjustment, head adjustment. All right, we're back together now. Let's uh, do a little testing here. Uh, oh, before I do that, I need to demagnetize the heads. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. This was purchased at Radio Shack probably 40 years ago now. It's one of the uh, head demagnetizers they used to sell. And you just plug it in, push the button down. It's got a momentary push button on the back. And you push it down and just wave it over the heads for a while just to knock any residual magnetism off of the heads. And uh, since I've been working in here with tools and all that kind of stuff, it's probably a good idea to go work around the screws too because they probably picked up a little bit. Okay, and then you move it away before you shut it off. Now we have, I have a 14 kilohertz test tape here. Let's try this. First of all, uh, play. Oh, you gotta power it up first would help. So it engages in play, no problem. Fast forward. It seems to struggle. some slipping here somewhere maybe that belt I put on I have the it had greasy fingers I think I might have to just clean that belt uh, I'm not sure about the fast forward rewind function on this it seems to kind of sticks in uh, doesn't want to engage 
But I think considering what this mechanism has been through, I think that's going to be good enough. Okay, Let's stop this. Uh, I have another taper on here with a 7 kilohertz test tone. I'm going to put that in first and then I'll get adjusting uh, before I do this, uh, this the 14 kilohertz. Okay, here's 7, seven kilohertz. Now, how bad is it out? Very good. Let's get a better one. Okay, right about there. Channel's a little weaker. I did clean the heads. Now I need to figure out how to do the uh, erase head here. Let me try tweaking it a bit. That takes it away. I think that's right there somewhere. I'm going to leave it there. This one here is tight. This one's tight. This adjustment screw here is good. Okay, I'm going to leave that at that 7 kilohertz. It's unfortunate about the fast forward rewind. I don't know if I can fix that. It seems like it's something with the mechanism that's just not right. Okay. Now. What I want to do is get an amplifier hooked up and we're going to have a, a test listen and we're going to see how it sounds. All right, have a listen to this. Uh, this must be one of these eBay, eBay belts because it sounds terrible. You can hear it wobbling, and you can see it wobbling too. It doesn't have the, um, I'll turn this down. It doesn't have the uh, consistent width. It goes like this. But it's really noticeable wobble. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably replace that belt. Um, that's the one that came with the machine. It doesn't look bad, but it's just a real low quality belt. And uh, I actually ordered some belts here a few weeks ago and they should be coming any day now. So probably what I'll do is I'll put this machine aside and when those belts get in, I'll replace it. And here it whistles and it uh, war warbles. It's pretty noticeable. Okay, so it's a few days later. This is the original belt that I had in the, uh, that came with the unit. Here's a look at the um, friction surface, the one that makes contact. Here's a look at the back side. You can see it's all, uh, it's all warped and it's got like kinks in it and warped. But it's got like a green pattern on here too. It looks like, I don't know if that's fibers or what, but this belt, this belt was terrible with uh, the flutter. You could hear it. It was quite noticeable. Uh, it's a four millimeter belt. And this one measures out at nine, 9.2 or something around nine inches. Just showing you here all the different, okay. 
So that's the one that came. So this is the one I ordered. On, I've ordered a bunch of these belts on uh, AliExpress. And they came. And I, I was curious on how their quality and how they looked. Um, look at how the inside riding surface is all glazed. This is after about two hours of use on this deck. I put it in and I tried it out. Um, the flutter, the wild flutter is better, but it's still crap. Not as bad as the original belt, but it's still there. Um, so yeah, like I just bought these belts just to, out of curiosity to try them. I don't know, can't remember what I paid. It was something like $2, $2 or $3 for a pack of 50 belts. And, uh, they were all just different sizes between nine and a half or 9.2 and about 11 and a half inches. But, um, yeah, I gave this belt a try and it's a thumbs down. So that was a failure. So my only option left here is I have a three millimeter belt and this is a brand new belt and this is a quality belt. You can tell it's, it doesn't have all these weird surface defects and it's nice and smooth. Um, it's just been hanging up on my hook here for a number of years. So I'll have to clean it. Uh, so this is the one I'm going to put in. This is the belt that we're going to go with. This is a three mil and this is measures out at nine, nine inches approximately. So it's going to have a little bit of stretch when I put it on the uh, mechanism. So you can see it's, it's nice on both sides. It doesn't have a bunch of surface flaws. Um, if you look at these ones under a, a lens, you can see there's all kinds of defects there's smears there's uh, streaks in the in the i don't know how they make these from extrusion process and then they cut them into rings but um there's all kinds of uh, defects on the surface there's like embedded dirt there's lint there's all kinds of nastiness and it doesn't, doesn't look like the rubber has cured properly it doesn't look like maybe it was it was um uh, gone through the vulcanization process uh, well enough it you know it came in a pack of 50 and they were all bundled together into a big lump and you had to separate them and they were stuck together and it just didn't uh, give me the impression of quality you can see the, the surface is not perfect it's got like divots in it and uh, yeah Not good, but we don't have to use those. We're going to go with the um, three millimeter belt. All right, finally got it finished and back together. This was a tough one. This one took me a lot of hours to get straight. And um, the initial problem with that broken piece of plastic in the spring, that threw me for a loop for a long time. And I had to uh, trace it down and figure it out. But then once I fixed that, I put it all back together and I found another portion of it wasn't working, which was the... Um, the the head loading mechanism there's a there's a, the flywheel and then there's two geared cams that run off the flywheel and uh, the grease on both of those were sticky and that was causing me headaches too until i figured out that i needed to take those gears apart clean that grease and regrease it with fresh then it freed up and then it started working because i had um, first of all i had no play and then that's because the cam gear wasn't moving it far enough. And then I figured out that the uh, deck had no fast forward rewind for the same reason, because the, uh, the gear on that grease was dried up and sticky. So now it's all working and it fast forward rewinds, no problem plays. Um, yeah, this was a, this was a real challenge. It took me a long time. Plus I, Whoever owned this deck before and sold it to my client put some garbage belts in and uh, that was another problem that threw me trying to find belts for this thing. Um, all three belts were incorrect. Let's see here. These little belts here are not the right, they're not the right thickness, they're not the right diameter, they're not the right, this is an O-ring or a round belt and uh yeah it was just somebody put whatever they had just to get it to work i think so they could sell it 
but uh, it's all back together now. It's working. Um, get it back to the client, and he should be happy with this now. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.